What is nociceptors? They are the pain sensing receptors. And nociceptor, then they are formed by the free nerve endings. They are nothing but just the free nerve endings. They are just the free nerve endings present in the surface. So they are present all over the body. That's why pain sensation is felt all over the body. And what do they respond to? They respond to any kind of mechanical stimuli, thermal stimuli and chemical stimuli. Some of the chemicals also can burn us and both the mechanical injury and thermal injury can cause a severe pain. And they are non-adapting in nature. These receptors are almost non-adapting in nature. What is the reason behind it? We don't want the pain to get adapted. If the person is getting adapted to pain, what will happen? He will not take his hand away from an injurious stimuli. There will be persistent injury to his, to his all the membranes. So that is the reason it should be non-adapting in nature. Now coming to the most important part, that is the types of pain. So what happens? So whenever, just imagine yourself, suppose you touch a heart pan. So what will happen? Immediately we withdraw. So there is an immediate response and a fast pain. And what happens at night? So there is, if there is a cell injury or a tissue damage, later on also we will have a constant nagging type of pain. So that type of pain is called slow pain. Why both of it has to be there? So just think, because I have to withdraw myself from the stimulus and I should prevent the further injury to it. I have withdrawn with the help of fast pain. But if slow pain is not there, what will happen? I might reuse this hand somewhere else and the injury can be more, more and more developed. So that is the reason there is both the types of pain. So coming to the fast pain, the fast pain is also called as physiological pain and it is acute in nature because immediately we are withdrawing, then it is also called as first pain and it is called as good pain. Then coming to the slow pain, it is also called as pathological pain because whenever there is a tissue damage or injury, then this pain will start to act. Then it is a chronic type of pain, then it is second pain or a bad pain. But I would say it is not completely a bad pain because still it is helping us to prevent the further injury of that particular place. And what is the fibers carrying them? The pain fibers are predominantly A delta and C fibers. The fast pain is carried with the help of a delta fibers. All these fibers is also very, very important. Then the slow pain is carried by the C fibers. And coming to the MCQ part, what is the neurotransmitter involved in transmitting this kind of pain? So the neurotransmitter for a fast type of pain is glutamate. The neurotransmitter is glutamate. Then the C fibers, initially the answer was given as glutamate, but right now the C fibers are predominantly producing substance P. So go for substance P as an option more than glutamate. Glutamate can be a second option but substance P is the primary option for the slow type of pain. Then what is the nature of pain? It is a sharp pain and this will be dull and diffuse. It will be dull and diffuse throughout the day. Then coming to the tracks involved in pain. The tract predominantly involved in pain which we will also see it in the ascending tracts that is the spinothalamic tract. Since pain tract is very very important we are discussing here itself but again we will be discussing shortly in the ascending tracts. So coming to the spinothalamic tract, the spinothalamic tract predominantly consists of two pathways. One is the neo-spinothalamic tract and second one is paleo-spinothalamic tract. What is neo? Neo the term means new. So this pathway has some characteristic feature which makes it as a neo-spinothalamic tract. Then what is paleo? Paleo means old spinothalamic tract. This old spinothalamic tract is predominantly present in lower animals also. The evolved version or the more distinct version is developed in humans which is called neospinothalamic tract. And this neospinothalamic tract is very very much responsible for the carrying of fast pain. And it is carried with the help of A delta fibers. What is the neurotransmitter? That is an MCQ. The neurotransmitter here is glutamate. What is the neurotransmitter? Why is he was in slow pain? It is substance P. Then after this, it will go to the spinal lamina. The spinal cord has various lamina. Out of this, it will go to a very specific lamina that is called as the lamina 1. Then all the sensation in the body has to go through the thalamus. The thalamus is also called as the relay station. So it is going to the thalamus. Finally, where it has to reach? It has to reach to the sensory cortex because this is a sensation which is carried from the periphery to the center. The somatosensory cortex, it will go and the pain will be perceived. Then come, coming to the paleospinothalamic tract, there is one interesting thing about this tract. This tract, it causes a slow and diffuse kind of pain. It is not a sharp pain. So more than the pain, it sometimes what happens, if we are having an injury, we will not be able to sleep at night. 
so it has to go and stimulate the other areas also this slow fibers does not reach to the somatosensory cortex alone it also goes to many other places let's see where all it goes so it reaches the lamina 2 and 3 this lamina 2 and 3 is also called as substantia gelatinosa this is also called as substantia gelatinosa then it will go to the thalamus but only a 10 percentage will go to the thalamus and from the thalamus it always go to the somatosensory cortex but only 10 percentage is going here what where the rest everything is going the rest everything is going to the ras that is the reticular activating system that is the reason why whenever we have a slow pain we are not able to sleep at night so the reason behind it is just the ras reticular activating system is constantly activated and that's why we have to take most of the times because morning we have various impulses at night we don't have much of the external stimuli so this pain sensations are felt exaggerated at night and coming to the next one it also goes to the periaqueductal gray matter it also goes to the periaqueductal gray matter then finally the tectum of mesencephalon so these regions are essential for the supraspinal control of pain which we'll see in further and they are also responsible for the emotional aspects of the pain so the old pain or the slow pain goes to all these three areas other than the other than the thalamus only so what happens how the pain is centrally processed so how we are able to understand that this is a pricking type of pain this is a crushing type of pain how it is formed it helps happens in case of two systems one is called as the medial pain system another one is the lateral pain system this lateral pain system is very very important why it has two components first it causes the perception of pain and discrimination of pain perception of pain is that pain i have to understand second thing is i have to discriminate the quality of pain so perception of pain is done at the level of thalamus itself so this is very important why all of us think that perception is done by the somatosensory cortex but no it is done at the thalamic level itself like maximum perception is done at the thalamic level itself whereas the discrimination part is done at the somatosensory cortex to discriminate it like different types of pain it needs the somatosensory cortex then what is the medial pain system we have done the perception we have done the discrimination here the emotional aspect of pain the emotional aspect that is connected with the pain is represented in the medial pain system and it goes to specific cortices it goes to three places which we have to remember one is the insular cortex it goes to the insular cortex then it, is, it goes to the medial thalamic nuclei. It goes to the medial thalamic nuclei. And it also goes to one more place, which is called as the anterior cingulate gyrus. Anterior cingulate gyrus. This anterior cingulate gyrus and some of the thalamic nuclei are also involved in the limbic system. Later on in your higher functions, we'll see that limbic system is concerned with the emotions. So, emotional aspect of the pain is perceived by the anterior cingulate cortex. So, these are the three areas where the medial system of pain goes. So, this is how the central processing of pain happens.